In Psalm 15, David asks, what kind of man is able to dwell in the presence of God using these Old Testament uh, figures, the holy hill or the tabernacle? David answers, the righteous man, the man who walks uprightly, the man who works righteousness, and the man who speaks truth in his heart. He lists these things that the dweller of God does. His manner of life is upright. That's his walk. He labors to do good, his works, and his heart is pure. He entertains truth in his heart, not wickedness. His inner man has integrity with his outer man. And then he contrasts this with what he does not do. What does the man who dwells in God's church not do? David says he does not backbite with his tongue. He does not do evil to his neighbor. He does not take up a reproach against his friend. These three phrases are all interconnected. They are multiple ways of saying the same thing. David is saying that the godly man does not slander other people. He does not speak spitefully of them. He does not speak maliciously. He does not employ speech with the intent to harm his neighbor's reputation, to impugn not just anybody, but his friend. That's what a backbiter does. And when David says he does no evil to his neighbor, he does not have in view primarily physical violence, but violence that's done with words, with your tongue, words that are used to injure someone rather than edify and build up. When David says he does not take up a reproach against his friend, what he means is that he does not cla uh, cast slurs on his friend. He has in view a kind of taunting uh, or saying things with the intent of bringing disgrace on him, speaking lies about them, bearing false witness, and, as I said, not just anyone, but his friend. This kind of man will not dwell in the presence of God. This kind of violence with the tongue is a particularly feminine sin. Uh, of course, men and women uh, uh, practice it, but nature and experience show us uh, that it's true that it's a particularly feminine inclination. We see Jezebel employing slander and false accusations uh, uh, to get uh, uh, Nabal's vineyard. Nabal, right? Am I? Naboth. Naboth, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, so women in particular are prone to speaking maliciously to others uh, behind their back. I mean, this is almost a trope in popular culture. Women are very nice and pleasant in person, and then they trash them behind their back, where men are usually more direct. And if a man engages in this kind of behavior, he's not only sinning, but he's sinning in a particularly feminine kind of way. Um, so uh, what we are supposed to do as Christians is if you have a problem with somebody, you don't trash them behind your back. You do what Jesus says and you go to them in person. You say, hey, you sinned against me in this kind of way. That's the manly way. That's the Christian way of dealing with this kind of stuff. Not backbiting, not injuring behind your back like Jezebel tried to do. So backbiting, taking up a reproach against your friend, doing evil against your neighbor, these are all subspecies of the ninth commandment. They're all various ways of bearing false witness against uh, your neighbor. Exodus 20:16. you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Elsewhere in Exodus, Moses says, you shall not spread a false report and do not join the wicked by being a malicious witness. Notice that the... The commandment is not just don't lie, it's don't bear a false witness, don't lie about your neighbor. James says, with the tongue we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. James 3, 9. One of the reasons it's important to speak truthfully of our neighbor is because it's important to speak truthfully of God. We are to be people of truth who speak accurately of reality. And if we are going to lie about an image of God, it's likely that we're also going to lie about God himself. And we want to have integrity on both of these fronts. David says the kind of person who talks this way is vile and that in the eyes of God, they are despised. This kind of person does not fear God, but David says God honors those who fear him, which means he will dishonor those who do not fear him. The reviler and the liar, Paul says, will not inherit the kingdom of God. They will be cast out into utter darkness. You will not go to heaven if you are this kind of a person. You will not dwell with God in his tabernacle. You will not dwell with God in his holy hill. 
The kingdom of heaven does not belong to such. What we say with our tongue matters. The way we speak matters. Jesus says we will be judged for every careless word that we utter, especially these vile falsehoods that we speak against our neighbors and our friends. So we need to be careful about what we're saying about others when they're not around and when we're, when we're talking with them. We have to be careful with what our tongue says. And the thing that David points out here is that it doesn't start with the mouth. It starts in your heart. Notice what David says of the righteous man. He speaks truth in his heart, and then he transitions to what he doesn't do. He doesn't speak falsehood with his tongue. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, our Lord says. So David goes from the heart to the tongue, from speaking truth internally to not speaking wickedness externally. So if you have spoken lies, if you have reviled your neighbor or backbitten your friend, God calls you to repent, to begin to speak truth in your heart so that you may speak truth with your mouth. This reminds us of our need to confess. 